Hi, this is part one of my course in uh, Fundamental Optics and uh, Lens Design. In this lesson, we're going to ask what is lens design and what do you have to understand? Well, what does a lens do? What can it not do? Let's start with a simple lens. What does a beginner need to know? Well, refraction and reflection laws. Lenses stops pupils, basic ray tracing, and very important, the optical design software that you're going to use. Now, everyone knows what a lens is, right? Made of glass with curved surfaces on both sides. And a ray of light comes in, and it comes to a sharp focus, right? Wrong. Except in special cases, the light rarely focuses to a single spot. Let's blow this up. Look at the image. We would like all the rays to focus to a small spot. In this example, the light from the edge of the lens makes the largest blur. Now, why is that? Well, because of aberrations. Image defects are broadly called aberrations, and there are many kinds. Usually, one finds uh, several kinds in the same image. They come in families called orders. Uh, many of them have unique names and characteristic shapes, and there are techniques for correcting them. And doing so is much easier today than it was in the past. This defect is called spherical aberration. And here's a very convenient way to picture it. And here's how that works. If you saw, the, look at this picture. This axis show the pos shows the position in the aperture. This axis shows the position of the image. Now, if you look at a bunch of rays coming sideways in the aperture like this, each ray in the aperture yields a point at the image. And we show it like this. It says that this ray at this part at this part of the aperture has this much image error. As you can see, it's a little out of focus there. Now what how do you correct spherical aberration? What happens if we bend the lens? Well watch these curves. They get smaller but they never go to zero. Bending the lens can reduce spherical aberration, but cannot eliminate it. And the third order spherical aberration has a very simple equation. It raises the third power of the fractional aperture, which is why it's called third order. And you can see if you change the aperture of the lens, those, those aberrations get much smaller. Now let's look at what happens uh, if you go through focus and you want to look at the, a lens with spherical aberration. So you see how the blur changes. There's a, a position where it's the smallest it's going to get, but it never goes to zero. See that? It never becomes sharp. So how can you eliminate spherical aberration? Well, one way is to use another element whose aberration has the opposite sign. <coughs> it's hard to make all the orders cancel because there's a third order, there's also a fifth and seventh and so on. And if the third order is cancel, well, probably the fifth will not cancel. So you're left with a residual error. You can also use an aspheric surface, which is much more expensive. Today, the computer does most of that work for you. For example, <coughs> two elements, all spherical surfaces, and there's very little spherical aberration, as you can see because the aberration of the uh, negative power lens almost exactly cancels out that of the other lens. And I will show, we'll show later how the computer can design this in just a few seconds. Okay, you've seen how spherical aberration makes different zones focus at different positions. So you might think, if they all focus at the same position, the image is perfect, right? Wrong. There may be other aberrations too. Here's an example of a popular telescope, the, uh, the Newtonian telescope. There's no spherical aberration because the, uh, the mirror is a paraboloid, but the image is perfect only on the optical axis. Here's what the geometric image looks like at the edge of the field. It's all smeared out, shaped like a comet. It's called coma, and we can wonder where does that come from? Well. You saw how spherical aberration makes each zone of a lens focus in a different place. What if they all focus in the same place but have different focal lengths? Well, we have to define the term focal length, so I must digress. Focal length is a first-order property of a lens. 
And by first order, we means it's a quantity which is a linear function of something else. There's no third order, no higher order stuff. It's really very simple, but it's very important because it turns out if you reduce the aperture to a very small value and the field angle, the aberrations approach zero, and what you get is just the first order behavior. And that's the behavior that you're trying to achieve with real apertures and fields. For let's see here. This is a complicated lens. Light comes in from an angle A, right there, focuses at height H, and you can ask, what kind of simple lens would do that? Well, there's a simple lens that will do that. The focal length is the distance from a thin lens to that image. In other words, it's right here. And you want the focal length of the lens to be the same for all rays. But in this, but this ray has to go further than that ray, which means the focal length is a little bit longer, and the image is a little further off axis, and that's where you get your coma. Unlike spherical aberration, coma can be corrected by bending the lens. Now, there are other aberrations you should know about, astigmatism, field curvature, and so on. They're easy to spot. You rarely see just one at the same time, and they're usually all present to some degree. Here's a lens, lens with a large amount of astigmatism. Let's watch, watch what happens as I change the focus position. Now, see how this turns into a line? And then it turns into a line this way. But meanwhile, the other field point turns into a line at a different position. So the spot diagrams change as we scan through focus. There is no focus position that, that yields a sharp image everywhere, and the best focus is not the same for all fields because of field curvature, which is closely connected with astigmatism. Okay, you might feel overwhelmed, and we're not even done describing all the image defects. For example, chromatic aberration. But relax, the computer can correct those image errors for you. Let's look at chromatic aberration. Here's the singlet lens. We, I put an aspheric surface on the so surface one just to make the spherical aberration go to zero uh, to illustrate this point here. And notice the red and blue lines and the off-axis image. The red's out of focus in this direction. The blue is out of focus on that direction, right there. And uh, straight line means it's out of focus. And the image looks like this. So the red has a blur of this size. The blue's got a blur of that size. And this is called primary axial color, or PAC. Now here's what happens when different colors focus at different distances off axis. This kind of primary uh, is called primary lateral color, PLC, where the red focus is here, the yellow, and the blue is way down there. Red yellow, green, and blue. Now both kinds of chromatic aberration arise because the index of the glass changes with wavelength. And now these are geometric images found by tracing rays. So there's two things to notice. In the past, lens designers had to carefully select glass types to find combinations that would correct the chromatic aberration. Today, a computer does most of that work for you, but you have to know what the aberrations are, what the image looks like, and what the computer needs from you before it can do its work. Now, the geometric image you just saw never actually shows up because of diffraction effects. Now, looky here. This is the, the image formed by a, um, a, a lens only with lateral color. You see the, the red and blue are, are uh, spread out. That's geometric. If you look at a diffraction image, you'll find that you don't get this point images. It's blurred out the blue, the yellow, and the red. Um, that's because of the finite wavelength of light. You cannot make an image that's smaller than a function of, of the wavelength of light. So that's the diffraction image. In the design phase, you can often ignore diffraction. Uh, we'll talk some more about it in, in a later lesson. Now, there are two kinds of geometric ray fans. It's a tangential fan, where the rays go from bottom to top, and the sagittal fan, where they go from the center out to the edge. And there are different aberration curves for each one. And a T fan looks at the aberrations as you go from the bottom to the top of a pupil. The S fan looks at the aberrations as you go from the center out to the edge. And you should know these common shapes. Like a perfect image, well, a straight line. An autofocused image, it's also a straight line, but it's at an angle. Spherical aberration says, well, it's in focus here, but it's not in focus there. So that gives you this kind of blur. You saw some coma before. That gives you this kind of a tangential fan. And if the sagittal and tangential are defocused in different amounts, that's called astigmatism. Okay, that's a very brief introduction. You know what the aberration are, uh, aberrations are, and the next lesson will show how to correct them. And thank you for your attention.